Lori, welcome to the Organize 365 podcast. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to our conversation, but first, can you tell everyone, how did you first find Organize 365? So in 2015, I lost my job and came home and I felt like everything was out of, like there's so much out of control when that happens. And I'm a very controlling person in my personal life. I have a lot to control. So having that feeling was very, um, anxiety rising for me. Mm -hmm. So, um, some of the things I could control, like I turned off our direct TV and I stopped Netflix, like all those little tiny money things that I could do. And I found myself just like lost for entertainment. So I start started searching for podcasts and Hmm. I, I've been, I'm a, I've always loved organizing things. That's just something I like to do. So I, for some reason, searched organizing and I found the Organize 365 podcast. So that was seven years ago. That was pre Sunday basket, I think. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. That was early. early yeah. I mean, that was right when the podcast started almost. I think so. Yeah. Cause I remember when you and your mom, like, I don't remember if you did like a Facebook live Maybe. or you did something and you were in your kitchen, like developing the Sunday basket. Like I remember yes. watching that. So yeah, that was yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. I was just looking at our Instagram highlights in the Instagram highlights. If you go to the Sunday basket, I show you how we created the prototype in there. It's uh-huh. really old. It's like three years old on Instagram and the highlights. I was like, oh, I was like, do I take this down? I was like, no, it's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, so you've been on the journey with me. Sorry that you lost your job, but glad you found well, us. Yeah, I got a better <laughs> job now anyway, but, but yeah. Um, yeah. I've been with you for a really long time. And like, I, I just feel like I've watched you start literally from your kitchen to like when you showed yesterday, like that you buy, you know, like the huge semi truck delivering all that product. I thought, oh my, I cannot believe how far the company has come since I started following you. So it really is surreal. I have to say, um, I do stop often and think about it and I'm kind of amazed. Yeah. Greg doesn't come to the warehouse and I think it's because it's hard for him to fathom. And yeah. also he doesn't want to think about all the dollar bills just sitting on shelves. Yeah. <laughs> it makes yeah. him way too nervous, even though it's all paid for. Luckily it's all paid for. Yeah. Um, he's not a risk taker. So he really is like pretending that, oh, at least he just goes to work. He comes home. He doesn't like to think about how many employees and paychecks yeah. and all that that are associated with it. Um, but I love it. Like, yeah. I just, I just love it. Well, it used to all be in your garage. So now you have a garage back. So he should be happy. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We need that for all Grayson's little toys. <laughs> so speaking of Grayson, who lives in your house with you? Yeah. So obviously my husband's with me and then we have three children. So I have a, an 18 year old daughter who um, was born with special needs. So she's mentally like a three-year-old and will never really progress past that point. And then I have a 14 year old daughter and an 11 year old son. And you live in the Northern part of the United States? Yes. I live in the Southwest corner of Michigan. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. So you've always loved to get organized. So it wasn't like you're like, okay, now's the time I'm going to get organized. Uh, but you started listening to the podcast. What had you tried before? And why were you ready to start trying the Organized 365 products? Because I know you also got the products when you could have just listened to the podcast and just, we just could have been virtual friends. Well, the house we live in, it was built in the late 1800s. So Ooh, um, whoa. it had one, it has one closet. One, it's a coat closet in the hallway um, that somebody else had built at some point. So none of the bedrooms have closets, none. Um, There's no closets. So (laughs) it was, it was really hard for me, even though I love to be organized, having three small children, because at the time when this happened, they were not the ages they are now that, you know, they were like three, seven and 10 or something. Um, They had toys and clothes and didn't respect putting anything back and didn't understand that. And, um, there was nowhere to put anything. We had no closets. So I had kind of basically just given up. I was working full time. My husband worked full time. I have all these kids. I have no space to put anything. There was just stuff everywhere. And it it literally was so, it gave me so much anxiety to have, but I can't handle it, but I also didn't know what to do. Like, I just didn't even know where to start. So listening to the podcast and then having that time, right? Like I'd lost my job. So going from full time to, huh, I got nothing to do all day. Um, kind of culminated in me just like starting. Um, and so, yeah, I just started with paper. So we had an attic space um, off my son's room where I would just throw paper 
because I didn't, I had a two drawer file cabinet, but it was so full. It was, I couldn't yeah. put anything else in it. So then there'd be a pile of stuff next to that. And then there'd be a pile of stuff next to that pile. And so there was just pile after pile after pile. So I started with the paper because I had the time and I was listening to your podcast. Isn't it so interesting when you literally, like I can, like in my head, I'm picturing what your house is like with three, you know, preschool and school age kids with no closets. And yet you pick paper. <laughs> like it's almost like you didn't pick the clothes or the door. No. no, you went to paper. Isn't it interesting yeah. what we choose to start with? So had you ever had your paper organized? Yeah. Oh, binders then. So like, why did you pick paper? Yeah. So yeah, we had, I had my paper super organized when we lived in our, we had a house before this. We didn't have children. Mm-hmm. We had closets in that house. Um, so yeah, there, I mean, like we had a file cabinet. I had every, every file labeled so nicely, but then after we moved here and all the kids started coming and the, my time was getting sucked away and I, I just gave up, you know? So, so yeah, there was a foundation after you get through the piles down to where I found where I originally started, where it was great, but everything had just kind of come on top of that. And I think I started with paper because uh, like, I didn't have anywhere to put the clothes. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have, there was nowhere else to put the clothes, but I knew after listening to you and the fact that I could get rid of some of the paper, like, (laughs) okay, I could actually make that pile go down. Right. I can actually control that pile. Um, so that's why I chose the paper. (laughs) You know, what else is interesting about that is that's 2015. Mm -hmm. So I'd been talking about the Sunday basket. I had not even it was 2017 that I made the prototype that I even said to my mom, we have to have a box. So this is so you are following my advice from the podcast mm-hmm. to organize paper. I, at that point, hadn't even realized that paper was my specialty. Probably not. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And I don't, the binders didn't exist then. I don't think. No, yeah, they didn't. I don't remember, because I didn't have them then. Yeah. It was yeah. more of me just, you know, and I would literally take a pile of paper and sit down and just be like, it was so, it, it was a little bit, I would be a little bit anxious, like, huh, like she says I can get rid of this can I get rid of this? <laughs> like, you know, it's a little hard to let go of that. Yes. Um, but then once you start letting it go, you're like, I don't need this. And I would, I was getting rid of so much. I got rid of so much paper. Like uh, why was I keeping all of this? And then once I did get it down to a manageable level, and again, this was pre Sunday basket, I was able to get it back into what I originally started with those, you know, those file cabinets mm-hmm. organized appropriately, which was great for me. Cause my husband is really big on like, where is this? And that would be, it was so hard for me before. Cause I'd be like, well, I have it, but it could literally <laughs> would take me sometimes two hours, right. To dig through and like find the title for that boat yeah. that he wants to sell that we've had for, got from his parents' barn or something. You know what I mean? Where now, like if he asks me for anything now, I'm like one second and I can go pull my binder out and I can find it in literally a second. And we have no file cabinet. Like I have no pile of paper anywhere except for like, okay, so work. we got to dive into that. So basically this would have been like seven years ago, Mm -hmm. you solved your own paper problem and got it back into the filing cabinet that you had had success with before Mm -hmm. you had kids. Yeah. You had a successful paper organization system for yourself before I came out with the binders. Why do the binders? I, um, I don't know. I just, everything you have done, I feel like leads me the right way. So I was like, she says to do the binders. The binders are going to be easy for me to find stuff. So I'm going to switch to the binders. And my husband didn't think I was crazy when I sold the f- filing cabinet in a garage sale, but I like the binders better. I can flip through them faster. Um, they're organized um, better in, in better categories. Mm-hmm. So like, um, like I have the warrior mama binder for my, my daughter, like mm-hmm. right now I'm applying for her for social security because she just turned 18 and yeah. all the stuff they need for that. Like, I don't have to dig through like certain sections of, or I just, I have a whole binder on her. I just grab the binder and I'm working on it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So did you get rid of even more out of the file cabinet when you made the binders? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. you did reduce more. Yeah. Because I had a whole, um, like one of those plastic carrying cases, they had all of our like appliance manuals. I still kept those for some reason. I had a really hard time with that. That was the last thing I was able to let go of is mm-hmm. just kind of ripping off a cover or maybe some important piece of information and, yeah. and keeping that. Um, but yeah, I had still kept all those things, but the, I kept thinking about it, right? How often do I pull one of those out? Like never. So right. why am I, why am I keeping this giant stack of 
owner's manuals is stupid. And furthermore, could you fix it if you pulled it out anyway? Cause like, I can't, well, <laughs> I my, don't know how. my husband probably could. He's super handy. Oh, but, <laughs> but does he have time? He looks at want him to do first that. anyway. He's not going to he's going to look it up online first anyway. So, so I will tell you, I obviously got rid of all mine and then we had to have something done on our HVAC and the guy was, I don't know, doing something. He's like, well, I need the manual. I was like, (laughs) he's like, yeah. I was like, I don't have that. He's like, you don't have that. I was like, just a minute. So I went upstairs to my binder and I found the page and Mm -hmm. then I went upstairs to my computer and I printed the whole thing out and I came back down with it. And now there's a slash pocket attached to the cool return drug <laughs> of my HVAC with exactly what he wanted to fix what he needed. But again, so it took me 10 minutes instead yeah. of actually having the manual. It turns out for whatever reason, I do need that one. Cause there's something that they had to program or redo, or maybe he was new. I don't know. No one's ever asked me for one before, but mm-hmm. I was able to print it out. Yeah. Cause I kept the front cover. Right. Um, so that's the one time I've needed a manual and what, 20 years, five years that I've lived in this house. That's the one time I actually needed one. And I was able to print it out within five minutes. Yep. It wasn't a problem. Yeah. So I, I like that story because for so many reasons, first of all, you started with what you had had success with in the past, which I don't know if you've listened to the most recent Organize 365 podcast, but we're talking about Swiss cheese organizing and how we do paper and personal and family organization and storage organization. A lot of people do start with the paper. And I think that they start with the paper because, um, well, unless you had success with a filing cabinet before, you don't have a solution. Like if you want to go organize your kids' toys, like for me, I immediately think of all the pottery barn catalogs I looked at when my kids were little. And that's what I'm trying to achieve. But when I think about paper organization, it's a filing cabinet. So there's not really a picture I'm trying to achieve. Then I'm just like, okay, well, how do I organize this paper the best? And then if you're doing binders, we like categorize it for you. It's like you attend a class on organizing paper for something you didn't know how to do to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could just follow those directions because you don't already have a preconceived notion about what it'll look like or how it will work or really any judgment about um, why it wasn't already done this way before. Cause you, I hadn't invented it yet. So it wasn't like you could have done it, but also I think that pain, like so often, I don't know how often, but very, very often in these Wednesday podcast episodes, when was the first time that you had success? It's when I could find the paper that my spouse asked for. I mean, yeah. has to be one out of every four times. Yeah. I was looking for a paper. I could find it. Someone asked me for a paper. I could find it. And I think that that's the hardest thing. Like you can find the sports uniform. It's either in the laundry or it's dirty, or it's like, you know where it is. It's just in some level of cleanliness about whether we could wear it or not. But the paper, I mean, there's a lot of anxiety about it. There is. There is. And applying for social security disability, it's a process. Oh, yeah. It's not. There's a lot of paperwork. It is not paperless, people. It is not a paperless process. The government is very paper heavy. They love paper. Um, And, you know, a diagnosis from two that may not be the current diagnosis can still be submitted in amongst this paperwork. Like it's the whole history of how you got to where you are today. And it'll open up different services than if you didn't have those papers. Um, So I'm sorry that you're applying for that, but I'm glad that you have the resources you need. And I'm sure it's an easier process than if you were still trying to use a filing cabinet or (laughs) hadn't even gotten the paper organized. Yes, for sure. So it doesn't matter where you start. Like you could start anywhere. And a lot of people do start with the paper. I think another reason people start with the paper, and it may not have been your situation, but you could tell me if it is. Um, the family really doesn't know what you're doing at first. Like if you had said, I'm going to handle the kids' clothes, yeah, and your spouse came home at the end of the week, and they were like, okay, but I thought you were going to handle this. Then you'd be like, well, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Whereas if you're just like going through paper and they see paper leaving, it wasn't really organized before. They don't really know what you're doing. And you're starting to be like, okay, I'm getting the hang of this. I'm getting the hang. It's a little bit more like organizing in private. Yeah. Kind of like the storage room is like organizing in private because nobody seems to care or comes down and checks on you unless they need something, which is not organization related. Yeah. No one's look. No one was looking in my attic and my pile of paper. (laughs) No one was looking. I know I was looking. Um, I almost feel like, so how long were you organizing your house before you started working again? Um, I actually was only off work for about four months. So okay. I turned but it that's around. That's a nice, you know, that's a trimester. 
Yeah. And it was summertime. So like I wasn't even dealing with like school. So it was the perfect time to have some time off and do the, that kind of thing. How much did you get done that summer? Like, how did you just keep rabbit trailing around? There wasn't even, I don't even think we had the 100 day program at that time. I think it was still the 40 weeks then. I think it was. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I, I got through all my paper. Um, and then it was soon after that, that, um, we decided to add on to our house a little bit. So we built a master suite. Um, and so I built a huge walk-in closet. I built a really Sorry. tiny bathroom, which was funny because when they first put the plans together, they're like, okay, this will be your bathroom. It'll be really nice. It's going to have a shower and a bathtub and we'll build you this, um, this small like closet for you. And I was like, no, mm -mm. I said, I'll, I would rather have a bathroom with no shower and tub, a half bath, but I need the closet. Like I need space for us to start putting some clothes somewhere. So we have a giant yeah. closet, very tiny bathroom. <laughs> so that helped a lot as well. Cause we were able to, it's almost like, I felt like our house was ready to explode with stuff. And we like just exploded into this additional section of the house. <laughs> um, and so that really helped a lot um, because we were able to, you know, move some kids around and we have armoires and all the kids' bedrooms to act as closets um, and, from doing that, then I was able to hire somebody to start cleaning our house, um, mm. which has helped a ton, like with my time. And before that, I would never have let somebody clean our house because there was so much stuff everywhere that I, like, I wouldn't even know where to start. I'd be like, well, clean the bedroom. Well, how she'd be like, how do I get around all these clothes you have piled here and this piled there? And not? so just to get everything into a spot so that we could actually have somebody come in and clean the house was like a game changer. Okay. So I want to talk about this. If you're open to talking about having someone clean your house, because I think that there is a lot of, um, I don't know. I felt like I kind of feel guilt every time I say that I have someone clean my house. I don't know why, but I do. And I've cleaned other people's houses and I've had my house cleaned and I like doing both. And I also like cleaning my own house. Like I don't have problems with any of the choices here, Yeah, but there is a exponential return on money for the amount of time you get back when somebody else cleans your home. And if you've never had anybody else clean your home, once you get over the feeling like you're a prima donna because somebody's going to clean your house for you, um, it is it is an unbelievably it's it's a huge gift. Yeah, like a once if you do it once a month, and you just tried it for three months, I don't think you'd ever go back because. Yeah. There's something about somebody else coming in and doing the toilets and the bathroom and the kitchen and the vacuuming. It's not rocket science, what they're doing. Like you've been doing it for your entire life, but like you prepare for them. And the joke is like you clean for the cleaning lady. Yep. Yes, I, I totally do. And it's Every great Yep. because it holds you accountable to yeah. picking up yourself and putting it away. That's really, we're paying someone to hold us accountable yes. for putting our own stuff away. Yes, totally. And I would much rather go around my house even for an hour and put everything away and run the dishes and start a load of laundry so somebody else can do the toilets and the bathtub and the kitchen. And then I come home at the end of that day and it only lasts for like not even 30 minutes anymore that the whole house is clean because Abby and Grayson are there. So by the time I'm like, can you just have the house be clean when I come home on Thursday afternoons? And Abby's like, bah, bah, bah. I was like, Time, forget it. So I don't even get to see it all the way clean. But it never gets out of control. Like that's the other thing. The reason why your parents wanted you to clean and organize your bedroom every Saturday is because when you let it go one week, yep. it was too much. Cleaning up your bedroom twice a week or twice a month is not sustainable. It gets too far gone that you can't maintain it. So a cleaning person or company gives you accountability for putting your own stuff away and holds you to a cadence that you can maintain. And because you're at a maintenance level, a forced maintenance level, it reduces the workload by 50%. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does all that stuff. So every other Sunday, my family knows like I go crazy for a couple hours because I have to get everything picked up, you know, but I'm, I'm just getting the space available for her to clean. Um, mm -hmm. but the amount of time she gives back to me, like that would take, I mean, she's here for six and a half hours cleaning my house. You know what I mean? That six and a half hours is six and a half hours. And I work, I work full time. My husband works full time. We have three kids. It gives us that family time back where I would typically probably spend a good part of either Saturday or Sunday cleaning every house. week. I don't have to do that. Um, and like you said, it literally makes it so every other week we're putting things away that potentially would just get piled on top of with other things every other week everything is getting put away where it belongs and so i never have that 
I mean, someone could stop by my house anytime and it's not yes. perfect. It is so yes. not perfect. There's stuff on the counter right now, but I'm also not embarrassed. In fact, you right. go, I'm not, I'm like, yes, if my house looks like it's lived in, but it's also, it's fairly clean. I mean, it's, it just looks lived in, but it, it's not like I'm a hoarder. <laughs> Yeah, they can so, go to the bathroom and you're not like, sorry about the science experiment. I know. Yes. I just, sorry about that. I've been meaning yeah. to get to that. Yeah. So it's, and she even says the same thing. She's my, my, the lady who cleans my house. She says, you know what? I feel like I do this because it gives people back uh, peace yes. of mind and family time that they wouldn't get because I'm, t- I'm helping them with that part. And I'm like, you so help me with that part. It's, it's amazing. And I know not everyone can afford someone to clean their house. There have been many seasons where I have not been able to afford that, but the time and money are not equal. So you're spending a couple hours on Sunday. I'm spending every Wednesday night about an hour preparing for our person to clean the house. It only takes her three hours to do our house, but she does it every week now. <clears throat> the way the grandson, I was like, can we please have this every week? Because I work full time yeah. and I would much rather be spending time on organized 365 and snuggling Grayson than cleaning toilets. I mean, it's just where I am in my life. But here's the other thing that we don't take into account when we're like, well, it only takes her three hours. So I could do the same thing in three hours and clean my own house. No, I'm sorry. It will take you five to six. And here's why you're already picking up for yes. her, him or her. Yes, her. You've already done part so of the that job. time is already there. Then I have to add the three hours that they clean, but here's where you forget. I have to add the other two to three hours of me worrying about the cleaning, trying to fit in where I'm going to do the cleaning, try to motivate myself to do the cleaning, keeping myself on task to finish the cleaning because I'm not the hired cleaning person. So as I start cleaning the kitchen, I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I'll throw a load of laundry in. Cleaning service is not doing that. Oh, I'll let the dogs out. Dog isn't even there when the cleaning service comes. Like, And I start to put in all these other household tasks and then I run out of energy. I'm like, oh, I'll get to that next week. And then the job doesn't get all the way done because we only have an a finite amount of energy. And so you have to do an hour or two's worth of work every week or a couple hours every other week in order to prepare for the cleaning service to come in and do the act of just cleaning is fun. And it is has a deadline to it. And you can like do that. But if you also have to clean up for yourself to clean and do all the other household related tasks while you're doing that and keep your motivation high, this is why it just doesn't. This is why you never get your house all the way clean, unless you're having the entire family over for the holidays. So when I clean my own house, it gets, it gets done twice a year, but when somebody else cleans my house, it gets done at whatever cadence it is that I pay for it to be done. And so it's just not the same. If they could do it in three hours and I'm paying $90, that's ridiculous. I should pay myself $30 an hour. No, it's going to take you six hours. So now it's $15 an hour. Um, And you also have to do the pickup and wouldn't, you know, it's just not the same dollar per hour. So it's not for everyone, but I really do think it's the equivalent of if you're a solopreneur, if you're an entrepreneur hiring a personal assistant or a bookkeeper. Yeah, you could do your own books. Yes, you could do your own email. Of course you can. Everybody can. But at what opportunity cost? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the opportunity cost? And now that I've read the book, The The Secret History of Home Economics, (laughs) Do you realize people in the early 1900s were not doing their own laundry and cleaning their own houses? They were hiring it out? No. Oh, yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was an invention of some big box consumer brands when um, the GIs came back from World War II and they created the house, the, the role of the housewife. Huh. That's super- it was fabricated and marketed. Wow. Well, it was very successful. Yes, it was very, very <laughs> successful. They are very large marketers. These people yes. have created the, the job for us that I have stri- striven to and <laughs> attained. And so, yeah, this is just very fascinating. Um, it's just very fascinating yeah. how it was all created. Yeah. So what do you think you have more of now, Lori? Peace of mind. Um, like I said, like it used to be Christmas is coming. We're hosting Christmas. And oh my gosh, the panic to think, not only do I have to like cook all these things, but to get the house ready for people to come to my house was, Mm -hmm. that was a project. And my husband would grab a laundry basket and just start grabbing things and throwing it in and then set it in the basement. And then like six (laughs) months later, I'd find like the laundry basket filled with things that I'd been missing. Like what? That's not how you, that's. This is not helpful. This is not not helping me at all. (laughs) So, so that, that, and 
in the time time I have. I mean, I could sit and read a book if I want or take the kids to, you know, we don't live far from Lake Michigan. We could take the kids to the lake and we just have the time to do that now. And I, I don't feel like I had that time before. And I didn't feel if I did take the time to do that, I'd be thinking what I should be doing <laughs> is probably cleaning mm-hmm. the house up or, you know what I mean? Organizing this or that. And I don't, I don't feel that anymore. Hmm. Interesting. How about the kids? How are they with, you have three kids. How are they with staying organized and well, the um, 14 year old girl is just like me. Her room is spotless at any point in time. Bed always made, everything folded nicely. She's just like me, makes lists just like me. Um, the 11 year old boy is a challenge. <laughs> I charge him every day I charge him a dollar per item that I find downstairs um, that he left out. So this is the only way I've gotten him to start picking his things up. <laughs> he doesn't like having to pay me. Um, and then my 18 year old is, you know, I control her pretty much cause she's, you know, she's pretty, mm-hmm. control. she doesn't have any toys or anything. So, yeah. so yeah, but we're getting there with him. <laughs> yeah. What do you wish you had known sooner? Um, I think, um, the ability to throw things away, like mm. to let things go. Like now when I get mail, I don't like just throw it in a pot. I mean, I throw it in my Sunday basket, but I don't necessarily like keep it for four months and every four months sit down and think, oh, I better go through this pile. Like I literally stand at the garbage can. I throw half of it away before I even walk to my Sunday basket and put the rest away. Um, and like I said, throwing away manuals and um, like I created a binder, a, a separate binder. I mean, I have all yours, but then like I, when I was done, I created a binder for jobs. Like my husband and I've had various mm-hmm. jobs and he has a very, um, job where he has to have certain licenses and paperwork around that. So I have a jobs binder. So like, if he asks me for this license, I can whip it out for him. Or, um, if we're going, if I'm going on an interview for something and I want to look back at previous performance appraisals to kind of remind myself of things that I've job, you know, projects I've done. Um, so I, I created a separate binder of just things like that. I never would have done that before. Cause I wouldn't have even thought to do that, but because of your what you do, I thought, oh, I could do a binder for that. That would be super helpful. So, yeah. And that goes right along with our workbox. So when you're in the workbox, you have the pink, purple, blue, green, pink is marketing or sales or things that happen before something gets launched in your company to your customers or who you serve, but it also is anything related to you. So often when you're doing the work boxes, you'll end up with binders related to the work boxes. So that would be a pink binder. And in the pink binder is everything related to your personal, professional career, CEUs, professional development hours, your whole career history would be in pink or like you could have purple binders for like, I have a purple binder for embrace because that's something that I've done every year. I have a purple research binder, like any kind of forward facing service offering that you do over and over and over again. Blue binders would be anything related to teams. So like I have an employee binder that has all their contracts and quarterly conversations in it. Um, And then green is administrative, financial, and legal. So I have a lot of green. I have like one whole one just for legal contracts, another one just for the 401k plan we have for the team, and another one for warehouse and everything related to running an office and all of our physical assets that we have. So those binders then relate back to the workbox is your active work, just like the Sunday basket is your active home. Right. And then you have the binders related to your reference that goes with your Sunday basket. You create reference binders for the workbox related to that for things that you would have put in a filing cabinet, or you may have them stored on your um, computer. A lot of people don't have the physical binders for business because it is stored on their computer. I do because you know I don't do digital, but we also have it all backed up in Dropbox for like when you know, the HR department needs to know about it. But if I personally need to know about it, I go to the binder because yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's just the way I think. Yeah. 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 I just don't, I mean, I know it's in Dropbox somewhere, but you know, not where I look for it. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to someone who's just starting out? So I would say to, to start small, like if I would have looked back at my house back in 2015, like I, it's hard to like, where do you start? Like, where do you mm-hmm. start? And I think you just need to pick one thing that you think you can control and start small yes. and just kind of snowball from there. So like I picked paper and 
I just chunked away at it a little bit every day. And, um, and that worked for me. I mean, that might not work for everybody, but I think you, if you look at the whole thing, it can be so daunting and overwhelming and you think I can't do this, but the only way to get there is to start. And I think you just need to pick what, what you think you can have the most impact on first. Great. Lori, thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. You're welcome. Yeah. It was, I just, I had been leery of contacting you because I was like, I don't have everything in my life organized yet. Like I should wait. And then I was like, I don't really know what I'm waiting for. I mean, you're never going to have every single tiny thing. Organized. Yeah. It's been seven years, Lori. How long are I you going to wait? Seven years. Right? So what would you say to people who are like, Oh, I don't know. I don't think my story, like, was it scary? Like tell them to be on the Wednesday podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, you should. And like, I think there was one a couple of weeks ago where you were talking to a lady who I think she was trying to organize like her mom or her dad or something like that. And you gave her like a piece of advice. And I thought, well, shoot, I should just talk to Lisa. She, it's just like, she might have some advice for me that I'm missing out on. So I said, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to reach out. <laughs> yeah. So, so Lori and I both agree you should apply right now yes. to be on the Wednesday podcast yes. and apply just means you have to think through what your answers are going to be before we actually bring you on. That's what it means. So yes. please, please, yes. please join us on the podcast. Lori, thank you so much for being our guests. Yeah, no problem. <laughs>